Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar. Today's webinar is about introducing RNA-Scope Multiplex Fluorescent Version 2 assay. Uh, just to note, as audience members, you are on mute. And to ask a question, please use the chat function on the top right of your screen. The topics I'll be covering today is, is the, are the key basics of the RNA-Scope technology. We will then review our existing product, the RNA-Scope Fluorescent Multiplex Assay, and then I will introduce our new RNA-Scope Multiplex Fluorescent Version 2 for 3 and 4plex. I will then pass this over to Dr. Ming Xiaohe, our senior scientist who is, in the, who, is, who is in the research and development lead for creating this assay. She will present some of the data that was generated in-house to show the robustness of the assay and breadth of application. So let's begin with an overview of the technology. RNA scope is based on a proprietary in situ hybridization technology based on a unique probe design and signal amplification. This platform has a sensitivity to detect most genes in situ as well as simultaneously quantifying multiple RNA targets. Just as any in situ assay, RNA scope assay involves permeabilization of properly prepared samples to allow complementary oligo probes to bind to, RNA, to an RNA target of interest. The specific signal is amplified using the double Z probe system, which is subsequently detected, detected and quantified. The assay is extremely universal as well as rapid and scalable. The growth and adoption of RNA scope is best exemplified by the number of peer-reviewed publications. In 2013, we had close to one publication per week. In 2014, we saw 84 publications or seven per month. And in 2015, our total publications exceeded those in 2012, 2013, and 14 combined. By 2016, we saw a steep increase in over 660 publications. And now for 2017, we celebrate over 700 publications in peer-reviewed journals in total. To the right shows how RNA scope is most relevant in cancer research, with almost 50% publications in this field, followed by neuroscience and infectious diseases. Many of these publications highlight the use of RNA scope in validating RNA seq results, applications in gene therapy, and as a potential test in companion diagnostics. The images are examples of eight journal covers, are examples of journal covers of the last 15 publications last year. So how does the RNA scope technology work? The RNA scope probe design is the key. We use a double Z probe design. There are three components of the Z. The upper region is the 14 base tail sequence, and that is the region where pre-amplifier and the cascade of the amplification will occur. The spacer region is between the base and the other end, allows the flexibility for probe binding efficiency to mRNA. The lower end region of the Z binds directly to the mRNA, this lower region contains 8 to 15 base pairs, 18 to 15 uh, base sequence that is specific to your target. The Zs are used in pairs. In pairs, the upper region of the Zs will provide 28 bases for the pre-amplifier binding. Both of these bind adjacent to each other to your target region from the lower region. The yellow line represents your RNA. If your RNA is intact, under ideal permeabilization conditions, the assay will hybridize up to 20 Z pro pairs to your RNA. But for many samples, such as, such as cancer FFP samples, your RNA could be degraded and fragmented. The simplicity of this design, relatively short probes binding the target, allows for binding to even short pieces of RNA. What our scientists have demonstrated is that we need to have just about three Zs to to bind to a target in order to detect the signal. Even for fragmented or degraded RNA, which are not likely to have migrated and they are still localized to each other, you should still see a single amplification signal for a single molecule. RNA scope consists of, of the necessary components to form in C2 hybridization for manual and an automated workflow. The manual kits include pretreatments and detection components for, for for, for a manual workflow. We also do 
contain, uh, uh, contain kits for automated systems such as the Lycan Bond RX and Ventana Discovery instruments. We have over 13,000 probes in inventory and create custom probes for any gene and any species in less than two weeks' time. Now just to review our existing kit that is on the market. For fresh frozen tissues, we have an existing fluorescent multiplex kit that utilizes manual 2.5 probes. In this kit, we have combined, in this kit, the combined manual probes are hybridized at once, followed by three amplifiers for signal amplification. Lastly, AMP4 is, is the labeled probe tethered to the fluorophore that allows for different color combinations. Fluorophores Alexa 488, ATO 550, and ATO 647 are conjugated to the label probe for each channel. And now I'd like to introduce our recently released multiplex fluorescent assay version 2 for 3 and 4 plex. The value that this, that this assay brings is that there is an increased signal-to-noise ratio with a significant boost, signal boost while suppressing the background noise by combining ACD's patented signal amplification technology with Perkin Elmer's TSA technology. This allows for expanded applications, such as using formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissues, which are notorious for having high autofluorescence. This kit can also detect low-expressing targets and enables dual-ish and IHC protocols. This product is compatible with existing RNA scope 2.5 probes in channels 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now to discuss some of the benefits of the multiplex fluorescent kit version 2. The high signal-to-noise ratio that this kit provides enables low expressors to be analyzed in any channel. The kit is easy to use with no additional sample optimization required and RNA targets, regardless of expression levels, are compatible in any channel. The robust signal enabled by this kit allows for dual-ish and IHC applications. Furthermore, this, this, with this enhanced signal amplification, the kit is compatible with different tissue types, such as formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissues or fresh frozen samples. Lastly, as robust technology allows for publication-grade images with high contrast in the fluorophores. Here we are presenting the workflow for the multiplex fluorescent version 2 kit. This is a TSA-based assay where the fluorophores used are from the TSA Plus kit purchasable from Perkin Elmer. First samples are pre-treated, followed by probe hybridization. One point to note. While, while, one, while one can run up to three probes at once, it is absolutely possible to run just one or two probes for fluorescent labeling. After probe hybridization, there are three amplification steps followed by consecutive HRP labeling for each channel in fluorophore, and then a blocker to quench the HRP activity after each fluorophore, while still maintaining the fluorophore signal intensity. After the last fluorophore, one can proceed with DAPI staining and then mounting with prolonged gold. Here is the workflow to identify up to four RNA targets at once. Just as the three-plex, all fluorophores are detected consecutively with HRP labeling followed by a fluorophore, and the HRP signal is consequently quenched. In this case, we have validated the four-plex system using Perkin Elmer's six-color opal fluorescent IHC kit using opal dyes 520, 570, 620, and 690. These fluorophores are chosen from the kit that give the best color separation. Note that fourplex imaging requires the, requires the use of multispectral imaging systems. Here is a snapshot of the multiplex fluorescent kit component. The multiplex fluorescent version 2 kit is by default a threeplex kit with enough components to identify up to three targets at once. The kit, the kit contains all the different pretreatments necessary to run all sample types such as FFPE, fixed and fresh frozen tissues. The detection kit contains the necessary amplification components, HRP, and blocker for identifying three targets. There is also the multiplex TSA buffer to dilute the TSA fluorophores purchased from Perkin Elmer at our recommendations for your tissues.
To identify four RNA targets, one needs to purchase the upgrade fourplex ancillary kit along with the multiplex fluorescent version 2. This kit contains the HRP for the C4 channel as well as the blocker to quench the signal. Manual probes in channels C1, C2, C3, and C4 are purchased separately. Note C1 probes are at a 1x concentration while C2, C3, and C4 are at 50x. Some of the imaging recommendations we would like to, we would like to recommend. For threeplex, it's fairly straightforward using the TSA plus floor force from Perkinelmer. Where the, where the recommended dye corresponds to the appropriate filter. For fourplex, we recommend using the opal fluorescent dye kit with the corresponding filters. For opal 520, we recommend the 50 channel. For, five, for opal 570, we recommend the 53. For opal 620, Texas red. And for opal 690, Psi 5. We chose these colors from the opal dye kit that give the widest color separation. And now I'd like to turn this presentation over to Dr. Ming Xiao He, who was instrumental in developing the multiplex fluorescent kit version two. Hi, from the following image, we'll see the example of some fresh frozen tissues from our brain and red brain and stained by the three plex positive control probe. As you can see, the low to medium expression marker poly 2A is labeled in the green color, and the medium expression marker PTIB is in the orange red, and the high expressive UBC is in the white color, which is size 5. And you can see the version 2 multiplex fluorescent ISA can detect targets from low expression level to very high expression level. Here are some examples of in FATE mouse brain tissue. Um, uh, the version 2 multiplex ICA detects some neural markers. Uh, the weak loop markers, the excitatory neurons that use glutamate as the neuron transmitters in the central neur nervous system. There are two different isoforms of the weak loop the weak glute 1 and the weak glute 2. As you see on the left panel, they are labeled by the green and orange red. And we get is another marker for the gabaneric neuron, which uses the inhibitory neuron transmitter gamma aminobateric acid, shortened for GABA. On the red panel, um, you will see the three markers. The CNR1 is a uh, cannabinoid receptor type 1, also, also, also abrogated as CB1. It's a G protein copper receptor located primarily in the central and the peripheral neural system. DRD1 is a D subtype of the dopamine receptor, and NMDAR1 is the key subunit of the multi-subunit uh, glutamate receptor, NMDA receptor. So as you see, use the fluorescent multiplex assay, you can detect multiple different markers uh, in the same region. You can use them to separate different cells, detect co localization of two to three markers within the same cell. And you can also detect different subpopulations of cells marked by different um, markers. And here's some more examples in the neuron science. These are fresh frozen samples. On the left panel is the mouse brain fresh frozen. On the right panel is the right brain fresh frozen. And this is a study to detect some NPY2 receptor and NP5 receptor. Um, they are both uh, receptors in the family of G protein coupled receptors that are currently divided into four subtypes, Y1, Y2, Y4, and Y5. Here are some examples of some markers of this family. And you can see the unique expression patterns of the certain markers uh, within the region. And on the left, you can see the green color labeled the NPY2 receptor in a subset of cells within the mouse brain. And in the right panel, you can see the five receptor and two receptor are labeled by different probes and they are co-localized in the same region. You can also use the multiplex 
fluorescein assay version 2 for use for onco oncological markers. On this, on this panel on the left, you can see it's a head and neck cancer FIP sample. And the green channel is the pulled probe, probe HPV HR18. It's a pulled probe of 18 uh, sub subset of the E6 and E7 genes of the HPV genotype. And P16 is a cell cycle molecule that's also an indirect marker of HPV infection. And MKI67 is a marker for cell proliferation. On the left panel, you can see the green color labeled the uh, HV positive cells, which also express P16. And the KI67 marks all the proliferating cells within the tumor region and some infiltrated with the, in the outside of the tumor region. And on the right panel is the breast cancer FIP sample. And KRT19, which is labeled in green here, is a member of the keratin family, which is expressed in the epithelial cells. It is often used as a marker for cancer cells with epithelial origin. So here you see the KRT19 marks all the epithelial origin breast cancer in the tissue. And the PCAM1 is the endothelial marker, so labels the endothelial cell outside the tumor region. And within the tumor region, you can see the active proliferating cells, which is marked by the MKI67. So using the multiplex fluorescein version 2, you can label different type of cells using different markers and see their interaction and the co-localization in tissue. Here are some examples of the four plex multiplex fluorescein assay version 2. And on the left is the breast cancer FIPE. Again, we use KRT19 to mark the tumor region and the CD8 to mark to mark the cyto cytotoxic uh, CD8 cells, also breathed as CTL. And CD4 is expressed by T helper cells and some myeloid cells also express CD4. And CD68 marks all the cells with macrophage region. So here you can see with the four plex assay, we can mark the different infiltrated immune cells in the tumor region and in the subtumor region, and you can see the interaction and how the expression patterns. On the right panel is the liver cancer FIPE, also marked by four different markers. The KRT19 marks the tumor region. The PECAM1 marks the endothelial cells. You can see them located outside the tumor region. And you can detect some proliferate cells in the tumor, majorly in the tumor region, marked by the red KI. 67. And the PTPRC is a marker for all the hematopoietic cells, which marks all the infiltrated leukocytes uh, inside the tumor region. You can see they dominate locate, in this case, they dominate located outside the tumor region, but there's some infiltrated inside the tumors. Here are some other examples with four plaques assay detecting oncological markers. On the left, it's a lung cancer FIPE sample. And here we use the FOXP3, the marker of regulatory T cell along with CD4 in red to detect the T rex cell within the tumor. And you can see there's some uh, very few fractions of cell co-express the two markers and reside in the tumor. And again, the yellow CD8 and the white CD68 marks the CD8 T cells and the macrophage origin cells infiltrated in the tumor. On your red panel is the ovarian cancer FIP sample. And here you can see the very low expression of KRT19 in this region. And you can see all the infiltrated of different subtypes of immune cells marked by CD8, the yellow marker, the CD4, the red, and the CD68, the white. So using the four plus multiplex assay, you can detect up to four RNA markers within the same region or within the same cell. Thanks, Michelle. So in summary, so this is a summary table comparison. 
As I we mentioned earlier, there's our, our existing kit, the fluorescent multiplex assay, where the length of time is about one day. It's optimized for fresh frozen tissues. Um, target expression level is ideal for medium to high expressors, and no additional items are required to run this assay. For our new multiplex fluorescent assay version 2, the length of time to run this assay is about two days. It's ideal for, for all tissue types, including FFPE, fixed frozen, and fresh frozen, and, and ideal for, all, for targets between low and high expression levels. As we mentioned earlier, in order to run this assay, one needs the Perkin-Elmer TSA Plus kit or the Opal fluorescent IHC kit. So in conclusion, ACD Continues with Product Innovation is now introducing the RNA-Scope Multiplex Fluorescent Version 2, a TSA-based RNA-Scope assay. This assay demonstrates robust results with high signal-to-noise ratio and is proven using different tissue types among multiple low to high expressing targets ideal for FFP tissues. I would also like to bring your attention to the additional resources available to you during the course of running the RNA-Scope assay. Please use the support tab on the ACD website to access these. And lastly, we are always happy to assist you with any questions or concerns you may have with regards to your RNA-Scope assay. Please reach out to, to, to us through any of the methods listed in this slide. Thank you. Some of the questions that we're receiving from the audience. Can I use a confocal microscope to view RNA scope targets? Yes, you can use a confocal microscope. However, you would need to check the filters on your microscope to ensure the adequate color separation. Can I use a regular fluorescent microscope to view your RNA tar to view fluorescent RNA targets? Yes, you are able to use a, a Yes, you are able to use a fluorescent scope. One question is, which version should I use, version 1 or 2, to achieve better results? This is completely dependent on whether you, on the RNA target expression level. For, for medium to high expression, expressing targets, we do, we do recommend that you use version 1 kit. Again, this is a shorter assay that can be run in a single day and does not require TSA-based, um, the, the TSA Plus system from Perkin-Elmer. If you know that your RNA target is a low expressor, we do recommend our, our latest version 2 kit. We also recommend version 1 if, you're, if you are using fresh frozen tissues. Version 2 is ideal for FFPE tissues. So one question is, can you combine RNA scope with immunofluorescence? Yes, you can, you can run up to two RNA targets and a single immunofluorescence using the version 2. Alternatively, you can combine three RNA targets with a single immunofluorescence using the multiplex version 2 kit and the fourplex. One question is, can I detect four targets simultaneously with version 2? Yes, you can detect four targets. You will need to purchase two kits, the multiplex fluorescent version 2, which has all the components to detect three RNA targets, and you will also have to purchase the fourplex ancillary kit that contains the additional fourth channel HRP and blocker. One question is, do I always have to run up to three targets at once? No, you do not always have to run up to three targets. If you would like, you can run just a single RNA target or, or just two targets with the appropriate probe. Another question is, how many brain sections can I stain with this kit? The multiplex fluorescent version 2 kit contains enough components to stain up to 20 sections or 20 slides. Okay. 
This concludes our webinar. We will be staying on the line to answer any further questions via our chat feature. Thank you very much for attending.